music for Egypt. Nile FM. You're saying just throw it away. Throw away the questions. Why? Let's just have fun. Let's have a fun conversation. Exactly. It's about and and tell the story of Egypt. Okay. Would that's you... a big that's a big topic to tackle <laughs> first thing in the morning. <laughs> Where or we you... can yeah. just talk about something else is fine as well. <laughs> okay. All right. So um um how's it going? So Rob, I have a funny story to tell you. Okay, go on then. So let me, you don't know this. I don't think you'll know this either. Many, many years ago, um, I was invited to do a guest host gig on Nile FM. Okay. And I would come in once a week. And I lasted exactly three weeks before they pulled me off the air. Oh, good. Yeah. All right. So that's just to lay the foundations of what's about to happen. Okay, I'm not, I'm not even going to ask you. <laughs> Why we? Why were you taken off? Let's not. Well, go. I know that you'll have, you'll have to ask your bosses that, Rob. <coughs> All right. So I've got my finger on the off off button for your mic, just in case. Um, other than that, uh, ladies, good morning. Thank you very much for coming in on the show. Thank you, Rob. Now, um, I'm going to need you to get a little bit closer oh, to sure. mic. Okay, speak up. Is it good? Yeah. Yeah. Ah, there you go. Okay, so there is some really important stuff that we're going to talk about. But first of all, how are you guys doing? And can I also ask you? Do you like Savage Garden? Because they're on the way in five minutes. I've <laughs> the artist. It's been a long while since that. Uh, so when, when do you like to relax? Do you obviously you listen to, to something? Yes. What do you listen to? Oh, I'm going to give away my age so much. No, no. you're not. I'm going to give away and also like how like overly like wrote and emotionally intense like <laughs> my music. But I'm a. <laughs> I can't believe I'm going to admit this. I'm a big Counting Crows fan, Rob. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> why, why is that a problem? But I mean, I think they're super cool. Not everyone always agrees with me. <laughs> no, they are. I mean, like Post Malone recently. But also, but but obviously also Taylor Swift. Uh, of, co- of course. <laughs> then, yeah, that, so that you're a, swi- a, sw- a Swifty. From, and, be- from- and Beyonce. And, and anyone else? <laughs> Beyonce. Are you just dropping names <laughs> <laughs> to make yourself <laughs> no, no. sound so like... So it's Beyonce at one end of the like spectrum and Counting Crows at the other end of the spectrum. And yeah. sometimes a little bit of wham and a bit of this. Uh, <gasps> Yes. See, Did you, you see the Wham? Do- have you seen the Wham documentary? I have. Did you see the Wham no, documentary? I but yeah, it was on over the weekend. Well, no, it's yeah. on, I watched it over the weekend. It's on a famous streaming plat- streaming platform. Yeah, and it's really good. Yeah. Really, did you know that? Uh, so obviously, you had George Michael, and then yes. you've got Andrew Ridgely. Did you hear the thing where he said where he was from? He's Egyptian. He's no. Egyptian. Did you know that Andrew Ridgely was Egyptian? He's Egyptian no. yeah. Irish. Yeah. yeah, and how come his dad was Egyptian? Why isn't this but this was back in the eighties. Oh, People okay. didn't own that stuff back then. But I, I don't know why. When I, when I see the videos and and stuff of him, I was thinking, yeah, he's got that kind of look. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I know you could tell yeah. when you watch him. He's got this like beautiful was, face, a little pharaonic. Actually, I'm, I'm, I'm almost yeah, yeah, yeah. right now. I mean, so I just, what just we threw do? me back to the eighties. I know, right? And you know what I thought was really interesting? When it was four. Do you right? know, I'm, I'm going to be back in was, five minutes. <laughs> no, but I'll tell you what I thought was really interesting is how when you look back, how much fun people made of them and how mm. silly they were thought to be. Mm. Um, and now you look back and they're iconic. And as even songwriters, they were mm. considered they're now considered legendary songwriters. Careless and it just Whisper. goes to say, Careless Whisper. What? What's legendary? Wake me up were they before like, you go, go. But careless weren't Whisper. they like big and like the they early were 90s big, but late critically, 80s. they would, get, yes, they would yeah. get slated critically. And it just goes to show never listen to your haters. I know. Exactly. And Just carry on doing what you love doing and uh, then count all the money when it starts to come in because <laughs> he is still making a fortune off Careless Whisper, uh, yeah. Andrew Ridgely. And, and uh, oh, really? yeah, so if you write something quality, like I've always said this, I want to write a Christmas song because you'll all just make money and money and money off from it every single year. Maybe we can add that to the uh, to the summit. It's to like, the narrative, yeah. yeah well, except good. they except they had written off the the profits from that song, didn't they? To the first the, year. The was it just the first, first year? year to live okay. aid yeah oh it was just that first year to I live think, aid I think it wasn't so, yeah. like in perpetuity no no okay. I think it was just the first year because they were up against it in the chart to become right. number one and they got to number two and then live aid got to number one cool anyway we just turned this into a whole different show <clears throat> what are your favourite 80s hits <laughs> we're going to be talking about the narrative PR summit which is on the 9th of October yes after this hit music for Egypt Nile FM it's Jose and almost sweet music here on The Big Breakfast, 12 minutes past nine. I am Rob Stevens, and in the studio with me, I've got two remarkable guests who you heard a few minutes ago. Uh, that's the Narrative PR Summit founder and CC Plus and Flair Magazine Managing Director, Lamia Kamal, and also the Mo4 CEO, Amy Moafi. Am I saying your, your family yeah, name right? Amy Moafi. Moafi. 
Uh, so good morning, ladies. Thanks for coming. Good morning. Good morning. We've, we've already discovered so much stuff. Uh, one thing that, you, you know, like Counting Crows and Britney. And, uh, did you say Britney? Well, but we can totally Beyonce. put Britney in there for sure. That's Beyonce. fine. Britney is equally important. <laughs> we're going to save that for another show, sure. another day. But okay. what we want to talk about today is um, the Narrative PR Summit. So that's coming up very soon. Lamy, yes. what is the main concept behind the newest edition of the Narrative PR Summit 2023? Well, the whole idea behind the Narrative Summit is to try to contribute to the nation brand of Egypt through storytelling and through um, highlighting leadership and all those progressive uh, success stories and giving recipes to how to put Egypt back on the map when it comes to investment, uh, tourism, art, culture, and all those like soft power uh, pillars. But this edition is very special because, well, first it comes after COVID. So it's a post-COVID edition. And there is a pre-COVID and a post-COVID <laughs> era. And um, uh, so many things have changed. And I think coming back was very important for us to turn it from a personal initiative coming from CC Plus or from myself and, and my friends and my partners, but to create a board for it. And this board constitutes of other companies, some of them competing companies, media people, chambers of commerce, the government, and 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 have this board actually highlight the message, pick the speakers, pick the audience, and we create something together. So this is something new. And also the destination is new, which is out of Cairo in the Red Sea. So we're trying to bring in this new concept and make it more of a, a national initiative rather than a, a personal potential thing. But it's also, it's also great to have a little bit of a break because then it gives you a chance to kind of like sit back and reset and go, okay, what have we achieved so far? Absolutely. Um, what, what can we do in the next episode or the next edition of? Absolutely. That's exactly what happened after COVID. I mean, we stopped after 2019. So we had three years of not doing the narrative. And, um, and I think it was very important because every year we'd be saying, we want to do it. We, we want to go back. But we had nothing really to tell, right? I mean, we had to wait to craft the right message, to bring in the right people, and to see where Egypt is at globally and how the world sees us and what do we want to say and who we want to show off on this on the stage. Because there's always been one day, one stage, everybody's there saying something in different disciplines mm. and then creating these recommendations, which then goes to different authorities. So we'd send them to the president's office, the prime minister's office, to other offices in the government to support what needs to be done in, in this respect. And by the way, when I did the narrative back in 2000 and I want to say 18 and 19, this is when they said, you know what, why don't you come and be the assistant minister of tourism for promotion? And it was a, it was a very new position to bring someone from the private sector to be assistant minister for this time period. It was based on these recommendations. Yeah, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a year ago. But <laughs> so it was a, it was a one year term. And, and that was the condition really to, to go and support the government for one year and then go back to the private sector and do something new and refresh. So I think whatever we're doing, although it may look like um, something that everybody does, like, but it actually has an impact because it makes people listen. Mm. And, and we think of ourselves as a team that we bridge the gap between the private sector and the government because we we're able to speak both languages and we know what every party is looking for. So we're trying to to accommodate each and, well, and communicate to each. You have Amy sat next to you, and I'd like to ask you a question about uh, Amy and the Mo4. So, in your opinion, to what extent will the contribution of the Mo4 network add to advancing the objectives and the messages of the summit forward this year and for the f future coming years? So, like, how, how is this collaboration? going to help push the message even further? Well, to, to be quite honest, this is not the first time that Amy supports narrative. I mean, she's been on the stage since 2018, I think. In fact, and in yeah, but Lemia kept me on stage. She <laughs> <pull> me <out>. <laughs> Never. <laughs> I was too so scared. I wouldn't do that ever. She'd get me outside. <laughs> the thing is, the, the picture we posted on our socials, you've actually got a mic in your hand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's always a mic in my hand. always. To what results, that's a different story. <laughs> <laughs> but, but on a serious note, Amy is, is a spectacular woman. I mean, she's, um, she's ambitious and she's driven and she's concerned consistent. I mean, she'd wake up every single morning knowing what needs to be done, supporting her team, supporting her partners. And she's very generous in that respect. She doesn't think of 
who's doing what and and who should get what credit. I mean, she does her job. She does it so well. And uh, Mofor is one of the very respectable companies in terms of creating the, this content. And they have all those uh, platforms, media mm-hmm. platforms that that showcases beautiful stories of Egypt. And I keep making fun of her because I, I go to a place and I think, oh, that sucks. And then I look what way we post <laughs> and it looks amazing. And I'm like, well, what do you do? Who are you like in a different setup or something, different events? I mean, Contact. <laughs> I mean, she has a wonderful team and, and she has this discipline and this commitment to the country. And I think her commitment to Egypt and her love for Egypt is very, um, it's awesome and it's inspiring. And as a woman who's able to penetrate this community and this society and this very <laughs> masculine driven place and, and, and to prove herself and um, uh, to do something different and to stay in that, in that realm is, is, is quite inspiring. So her as a person, Mofor as a company together, I believe um, were the perfect match for Narrative Summit or for Nation Branding to be projected properly. It's like a, an awesome collaboration between all, not just you as a person, but also everything that you stand for and exactly. that you, you've created in the name of Egypt as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, we're going to take a, a, a little break because I need to play Savage Garden, who's our Artist of the Week this week. Oh, let's see. You do like <laughs> yeah, Savage Garden. Uh, this one is taken from many, many years ago. I'm not going to go into the details. So I'm just going to play the track. This is Savage Garden and To The Moon and back here on The Big Breakfast. I'll be back with Amy and Lamia after this. Music for Egypt. Nile FM. Did that bring back any memories, ladies? Mm-hmm. Yeah? Always. <laughs> as, so, as soon as we sh- so switched off the mic, you were like, ah! I know. <laughs> uh, so, right, good morning. If you're just joining us, I'm joined by uh, Amy and Lamia. Uh, Amy is from Mo4, and Lamia is from the Narrative Summit, which we talked about quite a, a lot uh, to do with the how it came about and what's going on and why the Red Sea as well. We'll talk yes. about that again in a second. But Amy, hi. Hey, again. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so tell me what what's the, what's the role with uh, Mo Four? Is it Mo Four? M O Four? It is Mo Four. Mo Four. Yeah. So what's the role with Mo Four in this edition of the Narrative PR Summit? So you got to remember, Mo Four was when we founded Mo Four a, a little while back in 2010. We founded it with a very clear objective to tell the stories of the people and the places and the movements shaping Egypt. Um, I grew up in a time before social media. Because I'm 43. Yeah. <laughs> um, That's why I which keep Which I decided stage. has to be my thing to just own it. Like, otherwise I will unravel. No, I think that's fine. And, and the, 43 the, is the not... fact you've just said that on national radio. I, uh, I know. <laughs> I think means that you're willing to accept that. I know where we're going. We're going with this all the way. So anyway, so, and, and you know, as, <laughs> as much of the world, the, the story that I was told about Egypt, you know, I was, I, I, I was born in England. I grew up in England. Um, and I was told to have incredible pride in my history and my heritage. But the story that we're all told about Egypt is, you know, our, our ancient history mm. and our ancient heritage, which is incredible. And it continues to ignite the world's imagination. But what has, you know, historically always been lacking when it comes to Egypt's storytelling to the world is the stories about our contemporary culture and about these amazing talents doing incredible things that really shape um, our present and will shape our future across the industries that Lamia mentioned in arts and culture and film and entrepreneurship and music. Um, and so we set up all of our platforms in order to tell those stories and to spotlight those stories. Um, and we really believe in what Egypt is and what Egypt can be about all of our amazing destinations. And so in terms of that value that is so core to what we do, the Narrative Summit's own brand values and Lemia's own personal passions are so aligned with that. And so it's such a perfect fit and it's such a perfect collaboration. When it comes to what it, is it exactly that we do, at the end of the day, when you have a summit, you can have the most incredible people in the room. You can have a thousand people, 10,000 people in the room. But when you have... Um, good, powerful digital storytelling, you then have the opportunity to reach 100 million people across the world. Over and over, over again. Over and over. And mm. so that's the role that we we love playing when it comes to um, supporting initiatives such as this incredible narrative summit. Like Lemia said, it's not the first time that we're collaborating. And we're really hoping for the opportunity to take what these incredible speakers, which I know Lemia will speak about, who are... Um, coming to narrative have to say to take the findings that will come out of it inshallah and really amplify them to the world 
Now, that leads me on to my question for you, Lamia. How do you see the role of social networks promoting Egyptian uh, Egyptian tourism, but also um, attracting investors and businessmen? I mean, do you, do you honestly think that businessmen will be going through their, their socials and they oh, look at that. Their from teams Karasin. will. Okay. Uh, their teams will, for okay. sure. I mean, I know. For I'm just trying fact. to be objective. Here. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not absolutely. Saying, Why do you think it's going to work? <laughs> it's not going to. So, no, I mean, sorry, Karen, no, no, go no, on. You're, you're right, because I speak to a lot of um, those busy businessmen, and many of them don't have time for social, but but they have big teams who are, and who would support their socials, who would come to them for monitoring purposes and would tell them what's going on, who's saying what. And some of those savvy businessmen, like, uh, I mean, Elon Musk and others, who are actually attached to their social, who would actually post uh, their ideas and their projects and their, what they think, uh, online and we have business as well. I mean, Nagib Seri says also on Twitter. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have all those uh, businessmen who, who some of them are, are technology savvy and they're into their phones and they're into their socials. Others who are not. But in both cases, we know that the teams are. We know that we cannot neglect the impact of social media, especially in Egypt, where there's a very high penetration rate, where there's more than fifty percent of your population is less than thirty years old. So you're bound to have that impact mm -hmm. uh, with socials. So. Um, uh, and, and also with the summit, coming back to the summit, the summit is, is by invitation only and it's targeting only 200 people, 200 people, 200 guests and around 40 speakers. So a total of 240 people will be in Soma Bay, but using the social media platforms, it's going to be amplified to thousands, hundreds of thousands of people will I be guess, seeing this. I guess that's where the collaboration between you exactly. two came in. So you're going to host it and it's going to be like happening it's also one, boutique. like one time, yes. but then you're going to take those stories. And as mm -hmm. you say, uh, in real time, and live real, exactly. is happening. That's what we do. We tell these stories in real time. But then you, you also, know, you're going to And then we have them. all of that content that we can package and repackage in really engaging and interesting and exciting yes. ways for the global public. Exactly. And also, I was just thinking, speaking of businessmen, maybe we should invite um, Elon and Zuck to have their show down in Soma Bay at Narrative Summit. It can be a... Tweet stroke thread off. Right. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. <clears throat> Are you no, on that's thread? not an official announcement. <laughs> Are you on threads? I have I am. Are you on yeah. threads? Yes, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah, I I, <laughs> I, I, I downloaded the app the the second it was available and I'm gonna be honest, I'm a bit bored of it. <gasps> really? Yeah, maybe because I What is this blasphemy? I haven't given it enough time, maybe, but I'm just I, like I it's just it's, new. It's just yeah, probably that. Yeah. But it's so much cooler than Twitter. Why though? So I just feel like Twitter became over the years this really toxic space. Um, don't come at me, Twitter fans. <laughs> and um, and yeah. I think that also it's very difficult to get engagement now on Twitter. And so this is a much easier space to, to get a following, to get people interacting think, with your content. I think I, if you look back at the original Facebook and compare that to what it is now, you'll be like, oh, okay, yeah, it looks a lot better now. But maybe just because for me, it just seems a little bit black and white. And that's it. Do you know what I mean? Threads. <laughs> Am I just alone here? I, I think we're just Hello? experimenting. No, 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 we're experimenting <laughs> with it. I mean, you're you're right. I mean, it could. It, uh, I'm I'm sure some people are not comfortable yet with it. And a few years ago, a few days ago, I was like, "What is that? What does that even mean? Yeah. Why are we doing it?" <laughs> but but actually, it, it does grow on you. I mean, what does any of it even mean? Really? True. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, maybe. Yeah. I mean, I we're I, gonna fall down that vortex. <laughs> <laughs> But is it just another space where you can post the same stuff that you've posted on all the other platforms? Do you know what I mean? Is it, is yes. it just trying to grab people that you haven't grabbed anywhere else? I guess uh, it's just give it time. Uh, it's not even a week old. Well, I really hope, I really hope what Threads though. does is give people the opportunity. I mean, you know, Instagram is such a visual, visual and aesthetic space. Mm -hmm. I'm really hoping that maybe Threads will give people an opportunity to be more raw and more authentic. Okay. And... Um, I don't know why we're you mean talking about my completely the opposite Zuckerberg. Of if you're listening, I have some ideas. <laughs> you mean like completely opposite to how they are on Instagram, where everything's picture perfect. I, I really want to speak about this, and I'm glad you 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 opened that topic here because, um, to be honest, as much as I have so much interest and respect for social, I don't want to miss out on the real life engagement. True, and and that's why. Um, Post-COVID, we had the event on hold and we did not do an event for three years and we kept it on digital episodes. So we do episodes to support the COP, to support whatever is happening in the country. And we do these episodes to to highlight the messages or to highlight speakers in the COP, for example. But I we could not, after three years of observation, it's very important to have mm. that live engagement and mm. to have those um, realistic 
uh, uh, talks. And at the same time, you don't want social to take you away from impact. So you don't want to miss out on the deep content. So because social, you know how social is. I mean, you, you take the key highlights, the mm. good title, the picture, and you move on, right? Or, or the controversial <laughs> stuff that's going <laughs> to exactly. get the clicks and likes. You know or the mean? negativity, which can catch yeah. up on you. But 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 you what you really want to do is that you want to um, be, go deep with things. You want to be able to analyze and research and get to know the topic in depth to be able to have value and create value for for your network or for your mm. for your for your work. So um, as much as I have so much respect for social, I really don't want it to take us. I don't want it to take yeah. us away from the real thing. Well, you know, I think this is what is going to be one of the things that's especially special about this edition of the Narrative Summit is talking about kind of human connection. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes the real magic happens in the in-between spaces, right? The, the, the spaces where things are unplanned. Yep. Um, and because this is created as this kind of different format where 200 creators and storytellers and leading industry um, individuals and change makers are being put in a space together away from their daily lives, away mm -hmm. from their daily pressures in this you know, fantastic destination. I think outside of the fact that you have these amazing speakers on stage telling us their stories and giving us their roadmaps for yeah. Egypt storytelling, what I think is going to be truly special about this event is what happens when all of these people are in the same proverbial room and those connections that can be made and those stories that can be shared. So real and the life change, connection. Real yes, life connection yes, and yes, yes, the change yes. that can come about from these impromptu moments, I think is what's very special about mm -hmm. what Lemia is doing with this edition of the Narrative Summit. I, I love your enthusiasm for this. I can tell yeah. how excited you are. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she, like, she always is. I mean, she has this passion for everything. <laughs> when and is I'm it? Like, this is October the 9th. <laughs> can we just go now? Go on, let's go now. Let's I know. <laughs> I can thread whilst I'm on the way. <laughs> okay, uh, we'll be back in a few seconds um, because we need to find out more about the Narrative PR Summit, 9th of October. I want to know who's going to be on stage. Not everybody, but if you can just let us know a few of the people. Is that right? Absolutely. Excellent. Thank you, Amy and Lamia. We'll be back in about three minutes. Hit music for Egypt. Nile FM. You might hear in the background, you can hear them. Discussing stuff that's going on. They, they never stop. Do you feel like you never stop working? Yes. Yeah. Like yes. all the yeah. time. Yes. Yeah. That's what we do. Simple answer. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. We don't. Sort of, I think it's the kind of job that we do because, I mean, I'm in PR, you're in digital, you're in social. But the that, thing that's is. That's never switched off as well. Never. Is it? No yeah. media never sleeps. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we live our work and work what we love. and. But that's good, though. So if, you, if you've got a passion for it and you still love doing what you're doing, then why not keep on doing it? Do you know what I mean? Hmm. But um, after the narrative summit, uh, you know, after the ninth has happened and you all of that hard work that you put into it, are you going to take a break? For a week, I think. And then we come back for the new edition. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, you don't want it to be just an event that happens and then disappears and then that's it. You so, want uh, it to be an initiative. Phew. So you have to continue doing stuff. And Plus, you have to react to all the stuff that's being talked about shortly. Absolutely. Now, um, the, the summit itself is on the 9th of October mm -hmm. in Summer Bay. Yeah, yes. that's high five. Yes. And um, who's going to be attending? So there's going to have all these different speakers. There is, yeah, there is a list of speakers where there's the chair of the board, Mohammed Mansour, who is a renowned businessman. He's also the treasurer of the Conservative Party uh, in, the, in, in the UK. Uh, the chairman of Man Capital, which is I did not know about that about market. the UK. Yeah. yeah, no way. It's huge. <laughs> what? My mind is blown. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yes. It was a while ago he was appointed as that. Yes, yes. Yeah. I think I think it was less than a year ago. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Like, probably about this time last year, I think. Yes, exactly. And uh, and I think he's uh, he loves Egypt very much, and he has his business in Egypt. He has his business in, in the UK. Uh, I think he's just acquired, uh, invested in one of the big teams in the United States, football teams in the United mm -hmm. States. And uh, he has this passion and he really wants Egypt to flourish and to grow and to uh, reach its potential from an investment perspective and high net worth tourism perspective as well. So he's the chair of the board. We also have Ben Elliott, who is the founder of Quintessentially. Okay. Oh, it's Sir Ben Elliott yes. now. Yes. Sir Ben Elliott, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Do you have to stand up when you say that? We take this very seriously in England. Oath. Do we sing the national anthem now? <laughs> So he just, he just received his knighthood, I think, from um, the prime minister. It was two, three weeks ago, I think. So he's now, yes, he's now Sir Ben Elliott. He's, um, he's, he's a, also a renowned businessman and he's also a politician. He's been in the Conservative Party until 2022, I think. And um, uh, we have a, a, a lineup of local and international speakers. One of them is Dieb, the director, who's, uh, who directed Moon Knight, Egyptian director. 
who's, uh, you know, Moon Knight, right? The movie. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, Marvel the, Moon Knight, the, the, right? Marvel Moon Knight. Yes. It's so on, he's amazing. It's on <clears throat> Plus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I met him recently and I never yes. found girl and I was just, I was just a wreck. Yes. Because you know that line, I'm so sorry to describe, you know that line in, 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 in Moon Knight where she goes, uh, the little girl goes, Inti superhero Masreya? And she goes, Aywa. And it just brings me to tears every Aww. time. They've got and I had to tell him that. There's a new season coming. I think you should audition for it. <laughs> I, know. I tried. I tried. Also, I don't, I don't think he's particularly impressed with my rendition. So, so I go to meetings with Amy and I'm just, I'm just sitting there completely stunned. And with her animation, I mean, she tells me all those stories. I don't want to talk. I just want to listen to you talk. So <laughs> Mohammed Diab and who else? Because yeah, it's yeah, an so amazing got, list. And there's Aza Fahmi, the uh, jeweler and designer. Okay. And we also have uh, uh, the government support. So we have the Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities. We have the Egyptian Tourism Authority. So the minister is going to be there as well. Uh, the president of the ETA um, uh, also is going to be there. And uh, we have the president of the CIPR, the elected president of the Chartered Institute of Public Relations, which is an institute based in the UK. Of all those international PR firms based in the UK, they, they, they appoint, a pre not appoint, they um, vote for a president every two years. So that president, uh, Steve Smith, is going to be here as well. And Louis Bartolme, who is also a renowned, a renowned designer. Okay. And uh, he's, uh, he's, he has all those collabs and he, he celebrated King Tut's uh, anniversary last year with all those collaboration with Egyptian designers. And he's, all, he's French and he's, he comes to Egypt a lot and he's very much tied up with the country. So he's also going to be a speaker. So we have this lineup with this mix between... Uh, local speakers and international speakers. Mm -hmm. But the whole idea is even with the local speakers like Mohammed Mansour, Rawiya Mansour and others, we want them to have this global connection. For example, Rawiya Mansour is a, is a member of the Club Monaco, which is a business club of all those investors. Mohammed Mansour had his business here and there. We really, because you have all those businessmen and they're great people, but when we picked and we approached those specifically, we wanted them to have this access. To, interna to the international community where they can bring people or they can speak to those people on behalf of the country and create this ambassadorship notion and, and support what, whatever the government is trying to do, whatever Egypt is trying to do to bring in the foreign currency, to bring in the tourism, to bring everything back with, everything, with all the challenges going on. After these people have been up on stage and they, they've said whatever it is that they are going to say on stage, is it, do they just go off stage and then that's it? Or do they go back onto the, 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 the floor and watch the other groups speaking yes. and then they like kind of talk amongst themselves and discuss what had been spoken about? You never about? attended any of the narrative songs, I have you? I haven't. I invite you every year and you never make it. Have you invited him oh, this year, Lamia? I will. Shade. <laughs> I all lost the hope. All the shame. <laughs> because every, because I've, I've been here on the show before and I remember you telling me, I'm going to make it. It's going to be the four I seasons. Think, I think now I'm it's at Soma it. Bay, Lamia. Yes, yes. He's going to be there. I think he should be. <laughs> and Nugum FM and Nile FM are partners, media partners, so you, you have no escapes. So. I'm going to take the NRP Otherwise you have, private uh, jet. <laughs> I'll fly down there. Oh, I can give you the Mo4 one, don't worry. Uh, Mo4 private yeah, jet. Yeah, yeah, the okay. private jet. Or you the yacht. Piloted True. by Amy herself. <laughs> Excellent. I'd expect I it to be autonomous. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, so anyway, back to your question. So yes, they do come on stage and then they get off stage to listen to other speakers. Every speaker, when he comes, there's, um, there's music and there's ushering because it's all about the speaker, right? You, we need to glorify those people mm. who, by the way, came for free. Mm. Uh, they did not get paid for their time. Although every every single person of those people are professionals and they yeah. their time is worth a lot, so mm. but they're willing to give that time to Egypt to us because they believe in the initiative, and uh, they 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 come they stay on stage for twenty minutes, um, they give their recipe they give their, their what what they think they highlight the challenges and they tell us what needs to be done, it's a sort of a consultancy a free one, <laughs> and then they go back to sit with the audience and listen to the to others network. Uh, we have a good time. Amy promised to throw a party. At the, yeah, at we're going to be summer. throwing a car scene after party. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, uh, everyone will be behaving. Yes, themselves. everybody will. <laughs> coming from Guna. Coming of course. From I wouldn't think any, anything different. Um, 
I was going to say, how can you find out more information about this? But then that's where you come in. Uh, Amy, with uh, with all your different so platforms. So, of course, on, on all the Narrative Summit socials, yep. everything is there. So, the I know Lemmy's well. team so are guys, amazing at that. Do and you their guys website. kind of... I was going to... Well, no, we don't. So, they do that. Okay. So they do their own socials because they're the PR pros. They don't need <laughs> us. They don't need us for their own socials. I thought maybe there have been like like some sort of takeover where Amy from Mo4 <laughs> takes over for 30 <laughs> no, I minutes. I they want that. But then we have... So... Um, so multiple of our media platforms are going to be uh, covering, as we said, on ground and live. But also in the run up, we're going to be sharing lots of details as they're revealed and lots of exciting announcements. So you want to be following Cairo scene. You want to be following Al Fasla. You want to be following. I am, I'm not going to list the 12 platforms here. No, go on. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's okay. There's Cairo scene. There's Al Fasla. There's startup scene. There's scene noise. There's scene, eat, there's scene traveler. There's scene styled. Who am I missing? Who am I forgetting? They're going to call me scene home. I Amy don't know. herself. No, scene traveler. <laughs> scene traveler, of course, because we'll also be doing lots of destination storytelling during that. And you travel to Soma Bay, of course. <laughs> we will be traveling to Soma Bay either on your NRP private jet or my Mo4 private jet. <laughs> either or. Either or whatever. Yep. Who cares? Um, <laughs> so, yeah. So, across all of our platforms, you are going to be heavily supporting this incredible, incredible initiative yeah. that Lamia is putting together. I'd need you to stick around for a little bit longer. In fact, I find I'm going to find it very difficult for us to finish on time. But um, if you can stay around for a bit longer, is that all right? Will you play oh, a little absolutely. bit of Counting Crows, Rob? I, do you know what? I'm going to do <laughs> that for you. Depends on what you're playing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What's, going, what's, what's coming next? Which, which song would you like? Mr. Jones. Cast? Mr. Jones? Okay, let me find it for you. Uh, <laughs> nice. Talks amongst yourselves. Yes. Nice. I can sing over the drag if you like. <laughs> um, no, 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 you don't want to do that. <clears throat> which, which song is that? La, 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 Mr. Jones. I can't oh. sing. I'm a horrible singer. Oh, <laughs> anyway, it's the one that goes like this. Music for Egypt. Nile FM. It's a brand new song from the girl who used to be in Little Mix. I don't know whether they've broken up or not, but it doesn't matter because we're talking about something else. Uh, hi uh, to Amy and Lamia. <laughs> we're talking about the, the uh, Narrative PR Summit, which is com- coming up on the uh, 9th of October. And it's actually during the week as well, which we dis- uh, yeah. I just discovered. It's on a Monday. <laughs> what did you say Amy discovered? I discovered. Like, <laughs> Monday's the best day of the I week. Know. I love Mondays. <laughs> I know. Mondays are amazing. You can tie it up with the weekend and have a blast. I um, know. Uh, I was just a thinking... Bridge. That, I was just th- thinking... But Mondays are amazing because I've for years I've always tried to do this on a Monday on a Monday show. Say uh, have some PMA, m- a positive Monday attitude. Yes, but then change that around for the rest of the week for positive mental attitude. Just like <laughs> think everything's going to be great and it will. Yes. you know, attra- absolutely stuff we're, like that. We're manifesting <laughs> greatness and private jets. <laughs> yes. So Cairo Zoom. So I, just, yeah. I forgot to mention Cairo Zoom earlier, and that's our OG platform. So I'm just literally just saying the word Cairo Zoom. Shouts <laughs> okay. out to now Cairo we Zoom. May, now we may get back to the topic. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, this is the topic, which is the, all the magnificent partners who believed in our initiative and, and, and the cause behind it. So I want to give a shout out to the American Chamber of Commerce, the AmCham, who is bringing, who's a business partner, along with Creative Industry Summit, who are also our, um, uh, uh, what, what, what do we call them? Our creative... Um, Creative partners? Yes. <laughs> gurus. Hey, gurus, absolutely. And we have more for here. We also have the media, uh, which is the Ngum FM, Nile FM. Oh, yeah, I've heard uh, of them. And, yeah. <laughs> and all the great lineup. We also have Maison Pyramide, who's, uh, who's a PR company, by the way. And, and I think this is the magnificence of all of this, mm. is because we, as CC Plus, we're PR, but we also invited another PR company, which is Maison Pyramide, to support. And, it, and it's because we believe in this diversity of our disciplines. So our work is mostly in investment and in corporate PR, whereas Maison Pyramide are more involved in luxury and lifestyle. And we wanted to have this combination to be able to. It's it's more about uh, the the outcome of what you're trying to achieve absolutely, rather than, absolutely. oh no. We're, absolutely, we're yeah, absolutely. And I think that's because when you say Egypt, when you say the narrative summit, which translates into Kumbh Sot Masr, which is the voice of Egypt in Arabic, um, we want to um, amplify this concept, teamwork, uh, diversity, uh, collaboration, partnership. And these are all principles for what the narrative stands for. And I think by bringing all the, those partners and this lineup of the board of directors who are supporting the, the, and the speakers as well. And by the way, um, I forgot to mention that we have two stages. We have the keynote stage, which has like 10 speakers. Uh, the the ones that we've mentioned right now. And we also have the creative stage, which is going to be on the marina of all the fashion designers, uh, musicians, uh, events management companies. And and these people are going to be in a different stage during the second half of the day. 
Thank you. Um, uh, so what we're trying to do here is to showcase what Egypt has to offer. And I think creativity and business, mm -hmm. both sides, is what Egypt can offer. So where's the best place to find out all the information? You... Narrativesummit.com, which is our okay. website, narrativesummit.com. And the socials, which, which is Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, Narrative Summit. And also uh, more forward, they have the Kairosene platform, which every now and then has all those articles or videos talking about it. So you can Google it and, and it's, it's already there. Cairo Zoom. And I can resume, yeah, absolutely. And I fasten up. So, do I do the up. list again? <laughs> go on. Go no, 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 I'm not. No, 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 you can name no, no, drop no. right now. No, 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 I'm not. I'm not and no, every no, month, no, no, no. actually, every month, we're going to be on one of the media platforms talking about it. I think we're coming next month on LFM and the month after on LFM as well, telling you the stories of what's happening, who's going to be on stage. The creative stage is going to be more um, crafted. So, we're going to talk about it more. So, I think we're going to be back. Rob, you're not going to miss us. Yes. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, thank you so much for coming in, Lamia and thank Amy. You, thank you. Anything else you want to say amazing. before? No, Wait. this is so much fun. Thank you so yes. much for having us, Rob. Uh, and we play Counting Crows. For I know. This is oh, just made my entire week. <laughs> now, here's the best thing. So you're going to be getting in your cars and going off and doing whatever it is you're going to do now. You need to promise me you're going to listen to the next hour, okay? okay. Yes, we will. Because it's flashback. Oh! Oh, you got to put a bit, a bit of wham in there. Wham. Um, let me tell you what's coming up in okay. flashback. You've got uh, Banana Rama, Robert De Niro's waiting. You've got Alison Moyet. You've got Akula oh. and the Gang, Bill Withers, Andy Gibb, and I'm going to put some Mad uh, Madonna and some wham in there <gasps> yeah. for you. Okay. The she OG is. Up, she has something up in December in London. I think she has a big concert coming up in London in December. Uh, possibly, yeah. Which I might go to. I, th I think she had to take a rest because she had a bacterial infection, but she's fine now. <laughs> 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 no, she. she, well, she, good. she <laughs> they found her and she was unresponsive. Um, like, oh. This is Madonna. Yeah. <gasps> Yeah, a couple of weeks what? ago, um, she had to go be rushed to hospital, but it was just like some sort of um, infection, maybe in her lungs or something. Oh, no. But she's fine now. Okay, that's good. Alhamdulillah. So, Alhamdulillah. Good. so uh, singing in December. Ladies, thank and you very now. much for joining me. Thank, thank you, Rob. Um, <laughs> we need to get on to flashback because we're two minutes over already. Of course we are. <laughs> thank you. It's thank all you fine. So Have yourself a fantastic day. Me um, too. You said me you're too. coming back anyway, yes. so I don't need to say good luck with the event, but uh, good luck <laughs> with the narrative PR summit. You can find out all the information on our socials as well. Just get to uh, Nile FM online. Uh, for Twitter, uh, sorry, Instagram, and for Twitter, it's at Nile FM. Are we on threads? Yes, we are. Look at that. Yeah, no, we were talking about that earlier. And so FM is going to give me my co-hosting gig back? Yeah, yeah, okay, come back. Okay, amazing, great. See you tomorrow. Oh, you, can, you can do flashback now if you like. <laughs>